Welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And there's a couple things. I know Dunnigan always likes to do the house projects, or not house projects, but the, what are we call it? Not house cleaning. No, I just totally dropped blank. House cleaning? Uh, I think, I am. Uh... I don't think house cleaning is the, way, the word to use it. Just get the uh, official stuff out of the way. But um, I was on a podcast with Ben from the Project Egg podcast. Oh, and he invited cool. me on to a little interview and kind of talk all about podcasting and animation and the business of it and marketing and all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm not too sure if it's up right yet. We only did it like a handful of days ago. And I know he's kind of backed up on podcasts like we sometimes all are. But make sure to check that out, and once it does, I'll make sure to share it. But look for Project Egg. He does all kinds of interviews with different people and, you know, kind of marketing things and all kinds of fun stuff of learning about business, learning about art, and learning about the process. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know about that. I actually, I knew, I, I, I follow him and all that. I'm, I joined that whole group, but I feel bad. I've just been so crazy busy lately. I haven't had the actually chance to really interact back like hey thanks for joining hey man glad you joined okay you know <laughs> kind of like that but. well it, that, that's always i always consider that that's almost like the dilemma of art is that you don't always have enough time you always want to do a bunch of this stuff but then you realize the more art you're creating the less time you have to kind of like do you know look at other people's stuff read other people's stuff mm-hmm. watch other people's stuff it's kind of like when people tell me about shows. I'm like, oh, dude, you got to watch this show. He's like, I know you got like an hour at least at some point to watch it. And it's almost like, well, I'll tell you this. This is about all the time I ever have. I have 20 minutes or so and to watch something a day. And I mostly do that right before I go to bed. And mostly it's something animated. <laughs> and recently <laughs> not, I've just been watching Spawn and Sonic, the original show. If it's not bright colored, I don't give a shit. <laughs> exactly. So it's just I need so, those colors to get my attention. So sometimes I just don't always have that time. But there was that. And then the other thing I want to get out is Pizza Boys 2 is out. It's full board. It's up on Kindle right now. It's in the process of being on Comixology. You should check it out. Look up Pizza Boys issue 2. You're sucking on that. At first I was like, I was, no, well, I'm like when did you get noodles? <laughs> no, uh, so what's happened here is to interrupt your advertisement. I was taking a sip from my tea. And the string in the process came in my mouth. Like, what the fuck? Okay. But um, Pizza Boys 2 up on Kindle. Check it out on Amazon. Um, I'm going to be having actual printed copies coming in. But Ooh, awesome. Those might be, I don't know how, well, if I put them up on Amazon at some point. But till then, they're going to be like in-person kind of stuff. But other than that, though, check that out. Share it. Rate and review it on Amazon. That really helps out more than anything else. It's free with Kindle Unlimited. That makes it super easy, okay? You don't have to pay a single thing except for ten dollars a month to Kindle Unlimited. But did anybody fun way ask to check you out. to send you? Did anybody ask you to email to him this time? Not saying names. No, nobody asked me to email <laughs> to him yet. And actually, nobody asked me any of that stuff. So, well, that's good. That's good. Let me uh, let me say I actually read it, and uh, I like this one more than Pizza Boys One. I already liked Pizza Boys yeah. One. So I like both Pizza Boys One. And it was kind of fun because Pizza Boys One came out on Comicsology recently, mm-hmm. and the the interesting about that between Kindle is on Kindle I make the panels myself. So how it goes through each panel. But on Comixology, somebody else does it. I don't even know who this person is. So some some schmuck's got to sit there and read all these comics and like put the panels together. And I was just flipping through. I'm like, oh, other than like maybe about one thing. I was like, that, that was all it. I mean, not like the one thing was bad. I just had one thing my kind of way of like how it would go. And he had it like a slightly different way. Both worked. But it was just kind of interesting to see somebody else put it together. Well, I imagine that job right there. It's kind of because you know that that guy has to go through a bunch of like mainstream and indie comics i wonder if it's also one of those things like no we give the new guy the indie stuff they send in the guy's been working here for a while the guy that's leaving with a gold watch when he gets laid off that guy <laughs> he gets, gets wolverine movies. he gets yeah. you know the punisher he gets all that stuff yeah and i was wondering for a second like i was just kind of thinking about that like i wonder if all the shit he probably has to go through like oh god i have to make figure out what the guy would want for this but at the same time though if you're on Comixology, because Comixology just doesn't accept anything, so yeah, that's actually got to say something right there that the book got accepted and all that. Yeah, that's the kind of the cool thing about comics, because you know, at the end of the day, you can put anything up on Amazon. Anybody can be an author, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, that's kind of good that we have that kind of freedom we will live with nowadays. So, but that's also where you know you get people that publish books that are kind of like half-assed and so on. But on Comixology, it is kind of cool to be like, oh, accepted. I'm one. I'm one of the, the elite. Right. You know, p- p- part of that group. But One step closer to world domination. Exactly. So check out Pizza Boys 2. If you like retro gaming, if you like Mario Kart. I had a good description on it. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. This is the thing. I do better with writing than sometimes even talking. But, you know, that combination of podcast, retro gaming, and working out. You didn't expect that to all be in one, but here it is. Well, I kind of like the way you write it. I mean, I mean, 
I'm not not to not to like lift you up, just to discredit you immediately. Now they'll take it like that. But I notice you're, you're not the only one to do this. But at the same time, I think it's still good to see because a lot of times when people write like comic book fans or video game fans, uh-huh. they have a tendency to write them kind of like, oh, we have trouble getting laid and we don't do anything athletic. And you know this one. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, my character had a little bit of that <laughs> <in the> story, <laughs> just a little bit. But at the same time, I think there's enough there to bounce it out and make not make everyone else seem like you know. Flaw, like overly flawed, like to the point of like, like what's what's an example? Like I'm gonna just make a compare and contrast here. It's kind of like that movie Sex Drive, that that comedy, mm-hmm. and like they kind of make the guy so ridiculously flawed. It's just like I don't know if I can fucking root for this guy. Yeah. Or this, where something like a Kevin Smith movie, which I think you know probably took a little bit of inspiration that in real life for this. Yeah. Like I think it's bounced out to like okay, yeah, you can see they're a little flawed, but they're actually. They can they can actually be intel they're actually intelligent they can have like interesting conversations and be funny yeah exactly no I, I like that that they all kind of like that and, and that's why I go to the gym because you never see that in like comic book stuff that's what I mean is like everything I kind of do and it's like I mean somebody out there might have done it but you know through a lot of comic books I don't ever see one I don't see sitcom comic books very often that's like super freaking rare mm-hmm. I don't know why it, to me it feels like it goes hand in hand because. You have comic strips, which are pretty much like mini mini sitcoms, mm-hmm. and then there's comic books. But for some reason, like the two don't really mix and match. Isn't that kind of odd when you think yeah. about it? Well, seeing as because um, I know you and me, we we write, we have a tendency to like we just can't. We've tried before. We have trouble doing long strips. I know you've done a few strips yourself. Yeah, I did a couple. Like I did like a couple like promotion ones for Wall to be the Rabbit. But I was gonna say like, do you almost like stud? Do you almost like study kind of like a different kind of writing when you do like Pizza Boys? Like, do you look at more like Charles Schultz type of stuff, or do you like do, or are you just looking more at like sitcoms you like, and then based off ex- real experiences as well? Well, one, I do say the sitcoms is kind of it because I always wanted to write sitcoms. I like making sitcoms. I made the one like The Avalon, and then I have a handful of other scripts. When I was on Robin Slim show about like a month ago or so, uh, they actually said they watched the Avalon. They liked it. Like, were you involved? No, like, no, I wasn't involved with that. That was all Spencer. And he's just like, oh, I was hoping to see more of that. Like, yeah, you have to move back to San Francisco. And I don't think he's doing that. I know. And I, and I had the second one already too. And we're going to have a good time with it. And then it just became like all live action. It had, you know, all those problems coming with it. Well, but. it's like one of those things where I'm going to say, I mean, this is only, only if you've been watching, listening to the show and watch their stuff for a while, you know what I'm talking about here. But, uh, we had the drunk Batman live action movie, the mm-hmm. first the first one, and that just went super smooth. And, that, and that's this- how Avalon One was. It went super smooth. Like there was like no real hiccups. The only one that was kind of a, um, a there was a part where okay, if if anybody's seen the Avalon, because if not, this is gonna be kind of confusing. But there's a part where all the two main characters are out barbecuing and they're trying to like lead girls into it, which sounds kind of creepy when you say it like that. But that's really what they're doing. They're like, oh, chicks love it. Like when you can cook, you know, we'll get them led into this. And there was supposed to be one girl comes by, and she's kind of excited. And then two girls come by, and she's excited. And then there was supposed to be, like, really, like, a group of them. But for some reason, like, one or two people couldn't come. So it was just, like, literally one, which made it look like, oh, she's the super hot chick. And yeah. it was just, like, it was supposed to be a group of them, so it seemed balanced. So it didn't seem like, oh, this chick's even better than that. So, I mean, there's, like, things like that. That was about the one hiccup. I was like, oh, okay, what, whatever, fuck it, we're shooting it. Who cares? You just got to do what you got. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the part where they open it up, and the food's all on fire. And I like mm-hmm. it. We, we literally lit that barbecue on fire, like, in an apartment complex, which is probably super unsafe in San Francisco. Was that? Because they were, like, barbecuing out. Like, was it angled in a way so it looked like they are out kind of out in the open, or...? No, we were out in the open. We were, like, in the between the apartments. It was, like, the buildings were around, and there was, like, the center courtyard. Mm-hmm. They had a barbecue. And really, I don't think anybody else ever used that barbecue because me and Cisco used it, like, every night. Mm-hmm. And I remember we used it so much that it was raining one day, so we drugged the barbecue inside the parking garage. <laughs> oh. and... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, we even did the point, too, where we, there was a bench down there. We're like, damn it, we need a couch. We're like, both of our chairs broke. So we took the bench, and we took it upstairs. <laughs> and then we, re- we returned it at the end, but we borrowed it for a couple months. Yeah, we pay our rent, road this. <laughs> yeah. So, it was funny, like, that barbecue, the, the, the light on fire, we just, we had all this fat saved up from, like, cooking stuff that we just poured it all over the barbecue and just lit up. I remember one Watch time, it. I remember one time when I was visiting you guys when you were going to the Academy of Art, um, you guys literally, literally started a fire in a plastic trash can in your room. Why? 
just for the fuck of it. <laughs> and I'm the one guy, like, I don't know. It was actually literally like a pizza boy situation. Because it was literally me, you, Kyle, and Cisco. <laughs> so it was, it was the full <laughs> pizza boys crowd. And then, like, I'm the one guy, like, I don't know about this, guys. And, like, you and you and Kai are like, yeah, let's set some shit on fire. <laughs> Cisco's like, whatever. Just play, play like, video games. Like, yeah. So it was totally a pizza boys moment. Mm -hmm. But, no, that's kind of like what pizza boys is. I just feel like I consider it like I'm drawing a sitcom. So I get to write all these sitcom situations. You know, I try to even look at it like a sitcom, like try to have a joke every three lines or so, give or take, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then it's like I can kind of play it out and just write it and don't have to worry about anything else, don't have to worry about having actors or anything else. We can just, boom, pan out there. But yeah, I also say um, Peanuts and Charles Schultz, like that's always one of those ones I look at it like one of my like go-tos. It's like the simplicity of that. I feel like that's always like the key thing to take away from Charlie Brown is like, keep it simple. Don't need to go too complicated. And then I also look at Brian Lee O'Malley as another big one. And then Clerks, especially Clerks, the comic book. And the comic book is really good. Yeah, the comic book's real good, but plus it's just, I like the artwork a lot in that comic book. And it's straight black and white. I'm looking forward to when he puts out, now, now, now I want to go on a whole other tangent, I'm looking forward when he puts out the Clerks 3 comic, whenever that comes out. Exactly, I can't wait for more of those. But you refer, regarding the like, Pizza Boys for a second, um, do you know what the next one's going to be about? I mean, you probably don't want to say too much, but do you have an idea? Yeah, the next one, one if, you, if you read Pizza Boys 2, there's a big ad at the very end that says, Pizza Boys will return and Pool Boys, which Pool Boys was another script that I worked on a long time ago that was like, oh, let's just do it like a, you know, kind of a funny that movie about lifeguarding, like, a, like in a pool though, not, not like Baywatch. That one like, sounds kind of like a 90s, like, sex comedy. Yeah, kind of like that, but with maybe out that. So instead, I started off like, fuck, we need jobs, and you know... Dunny looks is like, dude, we got jobs. We're fucking podcasters. And then I'm kind of like doing the, like, the math. I'm like, yeah, but you know, we're only getting pennies a day. He's like, what the fuck? I thought, and I have Cisco sitting there. He's like, I thought we were going to bank off this. I didn't think we had to do work anymore. And we're sitting there at like a Clint Eastwood marathon in Modesto. That's so I was kind of setting up. Like if you've ever been to the state theater, I'm going to probably base it off that one. Because mm -hmm. that's one of the few like remaining original old fashioned theaters in the entire U.S. Mm -hmm. So it's got history there. And then um, from that point on, they're like, fuck, we got to get a job, so let's get lifeguarding. And since I was a lifeguard, one of those ones, I had a bunch of cool stories that you can use from there. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I like the idea is Kyle kind of has it built up in his head. It's like, it's going to be fucking just like Baywatch and everything like that. And then all those dreams are crushed. He's like, it's not anything like Baywatch. It's just a bunch of fucking kids. I'm going to say it's one of those things where I bet... Because uh... that's what everybody always asks. People are like, dude, you probably, he's like, there's probably chicks in bikinis all day long. I'm like... You like 10 year olds because <laughs> that's all there is the guy's like that's what i'm talking about like, yeah oh, just boom uh wrong wrong conver wrong wrong conversation okay going this way <laughs> yeah but that, that's that's always like what people say well it's kind of like whenever you tell people like yeah i make movies you make pornos no no i do not make pornos i don't know why that's always they, i haven't got asked that in a while i know i, I think that's kind of gone away that must have been a generational thing <laughs> I think it's one of those things in college and high school. You just go like, photos Like that. Like, they get really excited. Like, we're, we're going to see someone fucking! And now it's like, well, I got that shit on my phone. So I can look at that anytime. I, 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 I think, think that's what it was. I think it was more of a pre-internet kind of, like, notion. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of where it came from. And people were like, there was internet back then, you Stone Age fucks. Like, yeah, there yeah, was. Yeah, 56K was, internet. It wasn't the same. It was hard to get it here, though. That's the thing. I mean, my my folks' house literally got internet, like, two years ago. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, cause it's, there's, like, this big ass mountain that was in the way and AT&T's like we're not going up there fuck that shit yeah and I still can't get like regular internet I have to use cell phone internet so Which I'll say this like for a while we were doing it like because you had internet now at the moment you don't have I have internet I got it again see you got it nice, again okay nice so little white say, device over there I keep on coming up and vi it's just been weird circumstances have been bringing me up and visiting every not, not, not like every week but it seems like every other week just about and uh just for, by coincidence and it's just kind of like Wow, I feel like I'm very dedicated. I'm coming. We don't. You don't have internet, so we can't do the podcast. So I got to come all the way up here to do it. So yeah. If we ever, if the, if if we ever break up, I need a gold watch for my tra troubles. I know exactly. You're gonna need one. It's okay. I'll find one for you. I think I got okay. one laying around here. So I, that's why I'm so glad you mentioned that because this is where we part ways. <laughs> yeah, give me my Let fucking gold watch. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You should have talked to that guy in Project Egg. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what he was this talking was about. This was his idea. <laughs> he said, "Drop the weak link." <laughs> <laughs> you know which one. You're, you wonder why I didn't invite him on the show. <laughs> I probably should have actually reached out more to him. I no, he's Ben's a real nice guy. I'm sorry, Ben. I, I know we actually. If you're listening to this, Ben, I've actually I've not I've seen a couple of your live feeds on Facebook and all that. 
And uh, I haven't really, I know I've really commented back on it on a whole lot of stuff. I'm just not, I'm just a horrible person when it comes to social media. Well, and once again, that comes back to art. And by horrible person, I mean procrastinator. Yeah, not, 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 like, not like troll. Not like, not like I see like, you know, like a kitten, like a video, a kitten, a video of a kitten. And I'm like, that kitten should fucking die. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think it's just an artist thing. Then it's like, that's one of those ones, like the more you create, the less time you have to like almost interact. Mm -hmm. It just naturally makes you more of a recluse. I just don't think there's a way to escape it. You know, it, I kind of, I kind of feel it's almost like the mixture of like, sort of like a band or, you know, if you had a group of artists working together, you almost need to have like, there's the one guy who's got to be the Ringo who is like the social, he's out there, he's expressive, he's doing all that. So you can have your John and Paul's and George's all sit down in their rooms and George has to go in a separate room for some reason and write music. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's almost like you have the creative people and then you have the person who's almost out there like talking you know, being part of the team, you know, talking to everybody on social media, we things need, like that. We just need to round up our Ringo and our George. I know, that's what we're missing. I just got to find our Ringo and George. I like to think of myself as... Paul? I think of myself think, as John, so... That's funny, because the thing is, I think Paul... Don't take this the wrong way. Don't take this the wrong way. I think... I'm not trying to over... I like Paul more than John, but at the same time, I think Paul is more of a technical guy. Yeah, I, and I, I agree think, there. And I think that he's more, like, business savvy. And I think John had a lot of lofty ideas and just kind of went with it. Yeah, he's more and, very artistic. Let's And Rebel. Because, like, even when you read, like, the Beatles anthology, mm -hmm. he's, like, the Nikki Six character. If mm -hmm. anybody's read The Dirt, I remember, like, oh my, I'm like, oh, my God, John Lennon and Nikki Six are, like, identical people. Like, they both are just those extreme rebels that just do shit just because. Yeah, and I'll be honest, when it comes to Beatles... John, I like John. Don't get me wrong. I don't. There's not a Beatle I don't like, but John's probably my third favorite Beatle. I agree. I kind of. I think Paul's like my probably him and George probably my favorites. I mean, I, I think I, I mean, like them all once again. But I I think my favorites George. Then Paul. he needs he needs that credit too. He needs the credit. Well, he's and he's, he's, really, he's, he's really talented. You especially like those post Beatles stuff. Like he does a fantastic job in all. His I stuff. like his solo work more than anybody and more than the rest of their solo work. Yeah. So, and. um yeah, so I'd like to, I mean, I don't know, I guess if there was, I guess we have to be down to John or Paul, but yeah, I, I feel like such a fucking asshole comparing ourselves, which Beatle are we <laughs> like? Which, which, you know, and I feel like a fucking, like, now I feel like a snooty asshole. Well, it's kind of like when I draw Pizza Boys, I kind of, you know, you got a group of four people, you know, so you can kind of base, like, hey, if we were these four, like, I use Ninja Turtles to kind of, since there's pizza. There around. you go. Now I don't feel as, like, now I'm full, I'm full. Like, and I'm like, the way I look at it, like, much. okay, my character's kind of like Donatello. I look at Dunnigan's like Leonardo, because a lot of times he always ends up being, like, the main character of the story. I Aww. look at Kyle, like, Michelangelo, because he's, like, the comic relief. And then Cisco is Raphael, but not Raphael, like, movie Raphael or anything like that. More like Raphael, the, t the old show, because... In the old show, Raphael wasn't like, I'm fucking sick of this shit, I'm being down here, I gotta go up there. <laughs> Raphael, if he just liked a lot of craft beer and watched a lot of reality television. Okay, that's always how Raphael's like, fuck you guys, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they just needed to change it. I think they wanted to change well, it. That's up, how he so. is in the original comic, though, too. He is like the guy who's like, because that was the one thing when I read that, when I finally sat down and read the Ninja Turtles, the original one, I was like, oh my god, it's like fucking identical to the movie. Mm -hmm. it's like, I, that movie, like, because I used to think, like, why do they make Shredder like, he's like, or not Shredder, but while they make um, Splinter, he's like, I learned from my master as a rat in the cage. I'm like, that seems like so weird. Like, I like the story how it was in um, the animated one where it's like, he was, you know, Oroku Saki, you know, he was like a human and then he turned to the rat and vice versa, the turtles turned to humans because they were both interacting with each other. But in the comic book, it's like, oh, dude, that's exactly how it is. Splinter was the rat throwing punches in his cage, which just seems so weird. <laughs> which, you know, they had, the, like, Jim Henson was working on that movie and you had all those, like, fantastic suits which look so real uh -huh. and then you just have this little like rigid like rat punching and kicking like so <laughs> stiffly it sounds so weird it's a movie called ninja turtles about you know humanoid turtles that fight crime and i'm complaining about but the fucking rat but the rat but the, how is the rat throwing punches and kicks before he's even radioactive that's all i have to say well ninja turtles itself is just a weird conundrum just because it started off as like a satire on like comics in the 80s because it was just like Look at how serious something called Batman is taking itself. Look, they're they're trying to you know they're trying to make it all dark and gritty. What if we the dark and gritty Ninja Turtles? You know, uh -huh. so just trying to make it sound as ridiculous as possible, and then it kind of almost like sort of like uh, just blended in. It was no longer parody. It became sort of the thing was not the thing was parodying, I guess, but it, it just became just another like kids show because they were like, you know, we could sell this to kids, we could yeah. line it up. 
Well, the weird thing too is people always talk about they make it like, oh, the Ninja Turtles is like so dark. And it's really like, it's one of those ones, it's like, it's not that far off from the, the show. I mean, it's darker. They just kill people and they say damn in hell once in a while. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, maybe it's what I'll say. It's probably for the 80s. Yes, that was a big difference. But I think you kind of look at it now and you're like, well, it's not that far off. You know well, what I mean? Plus it was like almost satirical about how dark it was and how like they're, they're very badass turtles. It was this kind of thing like, it's so badass, it's so serious, but it's just such a ridiculous concept. Mm -hmm. And that was the comedy within it. And then they just like, you know, we could just soften this up and make it for kids. And yeah, it's, it's really not even that. I mean, the more like they put a little bit more laughs into it, but it's not that far off, though. That's the thing, though. Is people make it out like it's this huge distance, like it's not even the two same things. It's like, no, it's just one slightly darker and one slightly funnier. That's about the difference. Did the second newest one make a lot of money? Movie? Or the TV the show? The second newest movie. I think so. I think that one did pretty good. Like the, oh, I'm sorry, I said the second newest movie. I mean, out of the new franchise, yeah, the, the, the second sequel one, to that yeah, one. That I think one. it did pretty good. Because I'm wondering what because what everybody seemed to like it even more than the first one. So I'm wondering what they're going to do for the third one. I know there's all kinds of things. Baxter, are we going to get like, uh, are we actually going to we just avoid Shredder for one movie? Yeah, I know exactly. But that's that's always kind of the problem with sometimes Ninja Turtles. There's almost Shredder's one of the coolest characters. Don't get me wrong, but they like way overuse him too much. It's like picture of Batman the animated series. For one whole season, he just fought the Joker over and over again. That would get old real fast. I was reading, I was going to, for our comic book spinoff, which has been sort of a little hiatus, I want to do it again. I probably won't do it this one now, since we're talking about it here. But I was going to do the Batman Teenage Mutant, Tur Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover. Oh, that's a, that was a great book. Plus the artwork in it, it's amazing. The artwork's really good. That was almost like my yeah. selling point. I looked at that artwork, I'm like, dude, I gotta get this. That was my big selling point, too. I was like, Batman Ninja Turtles, okay, you know, because I'm, I like Ninja Turtles. It's more of, more of a part of my childhood more than anything else but i still like them mm -hmm. where um because i i really don't know a lot of the stuff be I, most of it just comes from memory from the cartoon I'm like oh yeah that guy you know and um i'll say though the, the reading the comic though was one of those things except i was i was kind of going to because i was like i'm going to avoid batman stuff but then i'm avoid then i'm at the same time like well you know what i'll do it if it's something obscure like i can still do dc stuff uh -huh. as long as it's not okay we're covering Volume three of Flash, you know something that's already continual and random. So just yeah, maybe it's a weird, uh, obscure spinoff of or, some kind. Yeah, but I was or gonna, a short I, run. I was gonna do that in something else. I can still do the something else, but um, that one I was just like, it was so weird when they have like they get all the ooze on the different like villains and you see what their animal kennel part would be, and a lot of them made sense. There was like you know, like Mister Freeze was a polar bear and. Harvey uh -huh. Dent was a was a was an orangutan or not orangutan like a baboon you know? yeah something like that. Joker was a was a uh, cobra that makes sense. Yeah, when the cool thing too is I mean like mostly whenever there's like a crossover of two series, I will say a lot of times the storylines are always kind of like you can kind of like expect exactly what it is. It's like it starts off there's two of them their worlds collide. In that process, they fight each other. That's mostly about the second issue, and they're pissed off. They're like, what the fuck are you doing in Gotham? What the fuck are you doing in my town? And then they gotta realize there's a greater evil, because both of their main villains have teamed up, and now they gotta join forces and fight. And that's mostly how, like, so many crossovers go. That's how they go. It's not, I'm not gonna lie, there's nothing really deep or amazing about it. It's not about story-wise. It's more of just, it's a chance to see some really cool artwork and some really cool action, and kind of mm -hmm. like a mixed match like dream up you've had like when you're like probably 12 or something that's kind of like what it's almost there for yeah because i'll say that ninja turtles has it has that same story like that kind of like and that's not a bad thing but that's lots of times that's know, what crossover you know you see it like there's like when they had the song the hedgehog and the Mega Man crossover that's what that storyline was when they had the judge dread and batman crossover that's what that one was except batman's like fuck you judge dread's like fuck you that's what every superhero does as soon as they bump shoulders yeah, it's, it's like, not like hey man i like what you do Oh, thanks, bro. I like what you do, too. He's like, dude, you look like you could use a massage. Yeah, dude, thanks, dude. Like, they, should, they should be the one where they're, like, super nice. Like, dude, where have you been all my life? <laughs> dude, you can make this. I could sew you some help. Awesome! I high five. Yeah. You want to slap dicks later? Far out! <laughs> but, like, like, that, well, was the original, that was the original draft for Batman v Superman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It all seems a little sudden. Oh, oh, it's now too sudden. Okay, we're just going to double down on the hate, then. Lois is calling up Superman. Like, Clark... You're always hanging out with Bruce now. He's like, yeah, well, Bruce is fucking awesome. What are you? <laughs> uh, your fiance? <laughs> Boring. <Hangs up. laughs> they're, back, they're like playing like ping pong like in the, in the, in the back. And like their underwear for some reason. <laughs> What's that bitch called about? Don't worry about it. <laughs> like orphan bros for life. <laughs> High five. They put on like the Megadeth music and continue <laughs> like playing. 
<laughs> that right there. Um, no, um, but no, that one was good. It was mainly just like, it's mainly just because you get this weird like mix match of all the different like you know just seeing all them how they bounce off each other. It's and when I said it's not nothing amazing. I mean, it's a good story. It's just that same story you've seen before, and if you mm -hmm. need enough co crossover type stuff. But it's more than anything. It's just like really cool artwork, really cool action scenes, and that's kind of yeah. why you, I think that's why I usually would get a crossover anyway. Um, I will say though, it seems kind of weird because they're all trying to they're all trying to like pull from one another in, in some way. So for the final battle, it's like all four turtles versus Ray Zhao Ghoul and then Batman versus Shredder, which is pretty cool. It's just a cool, which is a cool mix up right there, and. Batman's wearing this weird suit that makes him look kind of like a turtle. Uh -huh. I don't know why. It's like armored turtle, sort of. Like, I don't know why. I get there's a trade-off, and I want to say, I don't know what the turtles have, but I think they have some kind of thing that identifies as take, pulling something from Batman. Maybe they're using batarangs or something, but there's something they were using as well. And, like, the, the t Batman running around in, like, an armored turtle suit, that was a little... Because it was, like, it was more, like, sleek. Uh-huh. Like a bat suit, but shaped kind of like a turtle body. And then he just had, like, random, like, the colors on just different parts of it. It was yeah. just like, that's a little weird. Okay, I get it, but that's a little weird. I mean, you know, just like, I like these guys so much, I want to be like them. Yeah. I want to be like <laughs> you, Scooby-Doo, bad dude. That's Batman's favorite movie, Jungle Book. <laughs> and he, Batman, you always use a Scooby-Doo line. I was like, well, it sounds like Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, cried for, like, five days straight when he found out Scatman Crowley's died. I know, exactly. It was just, that, that was the worst day I've ever had. <laughs> Was it just as bad as when Adam West passed away? Oh, it was God. like a piece of myself went. Adam West just passed like two days ago. I know, and it's a Batman podcast. I feel like. Yeah. It, I mean, that's, that's another one of those ones I'll say. He was eighty-eight, so it's kind of like he had a really good super run. good run. I mean, he literally had a Batman movie in the last six months, so you know it, it all kind of like went out well. It's like it was just kind of one of those ones, just like in the night, wasn't like oh man, he's struggling with cancer for seven years or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just. I mean, it's it's always those ones that's sad, but it's like that's at least is that a good what he run. was? He was struggling with cancer? No, he wasn't struggling okay. with cancer. Oh, You're saying it wasn't one of those. Yeah, things. I said it okay. wasn't. It wasn't like he had like this painful like slow death. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was tied up to some board and somebody was coming by and like making incisions on him like every other day. Why? Just do. <laughs> well, it's just what I do. <laughs> I was bored. I'm like, oh look, an idol to many. He's like Adam West. Yes, <laughs> sitting there in his like chamber now. Loving Doctor Hurt from like Grant Morrison's run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It wasn't like he was captured by one of those. But yeah, it was still just that. Dr. Hurt. I'm sorry. I just it was just kind of like a bummer still, no matter what. But um, I was going to say, uh, now, I'm not trying to bring him down in any way, uh, but, I'm, I'll, uh, but I'll say 66 Batman was never my Batman, but I always respected it. Mm -hmm. And without 66 Batman, good possibility Batman wouldn't be here today. Because Batman was something where it's like the rights were very cheap because the comics weren't selling. It's so like, we want to make a campy superhero show. Oh, we got this thing called Batman. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah, take think, that one. I think there's, I think they had like movie serials back in the 40s about it. Yeah, okay, let's let's do that. All right, cool. Yeah. And, well, the thing, too, is like, I like Batman 66 a lot. When I was a kid, that was like totally my Batman. Because after the 89 Batman movie came out, that's when they started playing that show syndicated to get on TV, so I was able to watch, like, tons of those episodes, and, you know, you'd always have to find, I can't remember what channel it was on, but, like, any show that I've ever liked, they're always on the channels I barely ever have, or they're the ones that come on at, like, some strange time. It's never, they're never gonna be convenient for me, unless it's, like, maybe Batman the Animated Series, or X-Men, or Power Rangers. Everything else has always been, like, such an inconvenient problem of trying to watch. Because mm -hmm. I, I almost want to say I had to go watch those at somebody else's house who had cable. Like, you couldn't get those on antenna. Mm -hmm. But still... Batman 66, I mean, I used to rent the movie all the time. Like, that was a big deal to me. I still, I like Batman 66 a lot. Mm -hmm. So, well, there's nothing really Batman I, there's like nothing of Batman I don't like. But that's how it was. That was a big deal to me as a kid. I, I probably felt like, you know, people say like, oh, I grew up watching that as a kid. I technically grew up watching that as a kid too, even if it was in the 90s. Same thing. Yeah, and it's not even that I disliked the show. It was just never my favorite interpretation of Batman. Uh -huh. But... You know, I really respect that. I kind of see... There's a period when I was younger where I was just like, it's just been cheesy. I'm like, oh, it's satire. Yeah. And then you then you get someone saying, yeah, well, they're just not... They don't respect the material. Like, well, it was a time when it was about to get canceled and that brought back fandom to it. So without yeah. that show, we probably wouldn't have had 89 Batman. We wouldn't have had, like, the big resurgence in the comics that came out. Mm -hmm. And I think as well as ones, like, you could say, like, I don't think they respect material. I think they respect material. I just think they just liked having fun with it. I think that's exactly. what it was. Well, at the same time... 
that was also not to, not to be a dick, but you don't you don't have something like Dark Knight Returns at that point. Yeah, you didn't have like Daredevil: Born Again. I know I'm just saying like Frank Miller stuff here, but I mean you didn't have like you know you didn't have Frank Watch Miller. Me. You didn't have Watchmen. He was you Baby didn't... Miller at the time. Yeah, <laughs> you, you or Young have... Miller, I guess, not Baby Miller. He was probably like in his like teens or something. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, yeah, he would have been. You, you didn't you didn't have like the Watchmen. Boy you didn't Miller. Have, yeah, you didn't have you didn't have like that many. Um, didn't have like the. I mean, well, you, yeah. didn't, you didn't even have the '70s stuff yet, because that's because the '70s is once I feel like once comics start to get to that point where you got finally you had the kids that like comic books and they're like, "Fuck, I gotta create this shit now, fucking a!" And they're all like ex hippies, or not ex hippies, they're still hippies. It's only the '70s, because I think even the late '60s, there's good stuff that comes right from that period. It's you know what I mean? Like that's once you get like Neil videos. Adams starting to appear in there, that's once you get Dennis O'Neill, like. Those guys, I feel like that's when those comic books start being really good. It's like, perfect example, if anybody tells you that old comics aren't good, fucking check out Traveling Heroes with Green Arrow and Green Lantern. Tell me that is not, like, one of the best stories you've ever read. And it's, like, 68 to 72. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All of it's good. It's, like, roughly, yeah, like, around late 60s is, I think, where comics start to really pick up. I mean, I want to say Stan Lee, kind of, well, I'll, I'll say this. DC is my favorite comic book company, but I feel like... Marvel is always a little bit more ahead of a cur the curve because so socially in some ways right now that actually kind of brought them down a little bit because they're trying so hard to be like politically correct with everything that it just not with the movies but then the I should I should just send out that picture I took from like the it was I can't remember what Avengers book I was reading but there's the one where they have it was back in the seventies when they had Miss Marvel was black it's a picture of Spider Man like slapping her across the face. <laughs> Like the Batman the Robin, Robin meme, sort of like that, but it's a more it's a it's a like a straight shot, like left and right. He's just like big, like fucking backhanding her. <laughs> I can't remember why it is, but just I think she, either she's either he's like controlled by somebody else, or maybe she is, but it just looks funny out of context. <laughs> or it was funny because I was reading, I was just reading a random comic book because I was just catching up on big fat stacks of all my stuff, and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I had this Batman like greatest hits book that just had a bunch of like Catwoman and Penguin stories because it came out during Batman Returns and I was reading the first Catwoman one like before she was even called Catwoman she just called the cat and there's a part at the very end like after she's doing this uh, like jewel heist on a ship Batman's like arresting her he's like now be careful now be calm now or Papa Spank I can believe that I, you actually sent me <laughs> and that's, and that's Bill text. Finger Batman right there <laughs> Oh, the forties! <laughs> I, I love that picture. It was like one of those ones. Careful, and that's that's one too. That wasn't the forties. I think that was fifties, maybe. I think it was fifty-one or two. I think was when that one was. Yeah, it's so, weird. I, th I thought those Cap values carry over. Yeah, it's the same. It's still, it's once again, it's still Bill Finger. So. Yeah, but it's just I, like that was pretty funny, and you know that book was still pretty good. I mean, I still hold up. It was definitely. Why'd you, why'd you push it down the stairs, Batman? That bitch had it coming, Robin. Well, because there's even a part where Batman literally looks at the fucking camera and goes, okay, remember, kids, like, he's, I can't remember what the heck he says, like, you don't steal jewels or you get a whooping. <laughs> you know, one of those kind of moments. And then he turns back to the action, like, fucking, it's a Woody Allen thing. <laughs> now, brush your teeth and go back to your goddamn room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or Papa gonna come in. Just bat they just put this general fear into children. Like, Superman's like, hey, kids. Let's be good old American heroes and do the right thing. Batman's just like totally intimidation by fear. Just like, <laughs> all right, kids, now don't shoplift or I'll beat the fuck out of you. See, that would almost be funny for like Punisher. It's like if he literally turned to the camera. Okay, kids, you want to know why we don't rob? And he slams this guy's head like down on like the counter. And he takes out like a little mini chainsaw and just starts cranking it with his teeth almost to turn it on with like one hand while he's holding the guy's head down. And it's like... He's kind of squirming. He's like, it's, put your hand down. Put your fucking hand down. And he's like looking at the kids like, you don't fucking look away. Don't fucking look away. He starts cutting their hand off with a chainsaw. I learned this back in Baghdad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, guys, remember. <laughs> well, that's one of those things I, like, if, if Pun, I was kind of think like, what if Punisher came out like in the 40s or 50s? Kind of like that, like still doing the smiley, happy, like, hello, kids. I did. I, I kill all the crime on the streets. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha. Just smiles in the wind as he just kicked the guy down the stairs, and now he's all crippled with blow. <laughs> Show that fucker. Rips off a grenade, chucks it down. You gotta make sure they're dead. But still doing that, like, 1940s arm on the hip, smiling, yeah. looking at the camera. <laughs> I was gonna say, though, um, regarding the biggest difference between, I think, Marvel and DC, I think Marvel sometimes... I mean, they trade off, but it seems like Marvel, they're the ones really pushing things forward, like... 
what if we had a teenage superhero? And then, yeah. d- then they're like, well, what if we had, like, superheroes that were um, famous, but they had to kind of, like, crumble under the weight of just being famous and having to put up with that all the time, so Fantastic Four. And what if we had, like, superheroes that people didn't like, like the X-Men? Yeah. And then also playing and things from Civil Rights Movement going on then. Then, like, Mar- DC you eventually picked up on that, and I think they... Maybe they brought in some of that stuff. They definitely brought in the Traveling Heroes, addressing, like black and white issues with by introducing um uh john stewart yeah well that was the part where that guy's like he's like talking to green light he's like you helped the pink man you helped the red man you helped the you know the purple man but what have you ever done for the black man you white piece of shit yeah and like, <laughs> oh, like oh i've been in space the whole time yeah that, that's what i thought your fucking answer was is it all is it all over <laughs> queen kind of like this come across he's like dude like, it's like that's why you gotta hang out the public Quit hanging on space. What the fucking uppity yuppities up there in Elysium, you fucking motherfucker. Well, this is like, seems like, stop talking down away. to me. He's like, geez, I came to hang out with you. This is all you do is you're going to insult me well, say, as like, you sit there on a telephone pole? Back in the 60s and 70s, like, John, St- I mean, not John, St- um, Hal Jordan seemed a little bit more like, but that's the right thing to do. And as time went on, they made him more the rebel of the team. Well, they made him kind of almost like he was like, which I guess makes the sense. Cop. Well, they made him like he was separated from like the, the average Joe, and once again, mm-hmm. it makes sense. He's in space, flying around, doing all kinds of most of his stuff. life though was up was on Earth. Though. But then he was like he was a pilot, so he was always held at the highest stand. I think that's, that's kinda, actually a good point because like people he was never the, a normal people guy. People in the Air Force were always kind of and he like, was like yeah. and he was born into it. So really, at the end of the day, how I like how Jordan a lot, but now that I start thinking about him, I'm like, dude, that guy would probably be a total asshole <laughs> if he didn't get that ring. <laughs> yeah, because you know you think about it, he's like he's just this entitled guy. His dad was in the Air Force, and, like, he gets to be in the Air Force because of it. You know, it's a job that almost nobody gets. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, like, the top pilot. And and to top it all off, he gets a ring at the end of the day? I noticed from my job, because I deal with tourism, pilots are usually one of two things. They're either the just chillest, coolest guys, or they are kind of, like, very, like... If it's a younger pilot, like, if it's a guy who's, like, in his, like, 30s or early 40s, He's a self-absorbed asshole most of the time. Like, yes, I'm a pilot. Yes, yeah. I can Did do Did you that. see my tattoo? Yeah. Falls up his sleeve. Or if it's like a, if it's a guy that's been doing it for a little while. He starts pushing like, in your face. Huh? I'll see, uh, I'll see it. It's like bouncing off your nose. American Air One! Slamming. <laughs> Slam, <laughs> slamming your head into it. He's like, feel that Tomcat. Feel it. Like, uh, <laughs> like uh, what was I going to say? Like, there is... One like I, 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 I'm not not always, but it's, there's like sometimes where I, I had to deal with some that are just like total fucking dicks. But there are times like the guy was ch- chill as fuck, and I think he understands that like I think he understands like just patient. I don't know if you have to go through all that shit. I imagine there's like I mean I really don't know what you have to do exactly, but I imagine that there's a lot of patience. So they have to be a little bit more empathetic, and I think some people don't always take that. Some people just like I can fucking do whatever I want, you know. Yeah, yeah. Once again, like anything, there's always gonna be mixed match people. That, but I think it is still like an elitist kind of thing, and I think to some people it almost goes to their head. So if, yeah, that, that actually didn't come out as adequate as I wanted it to. It sounded out like, I had something, but I don't know where I'm going with it. Uh, here's a better way. I think is you know if you're a pilot you got to rely on a lot of other people because mm-hmm. you got to rely on the guy in the radio tower you got to rely on your co-pilot and other people like your probably your staff and all that so out of that I think the smarter nicer cooler guys are people who will recognize that other guys go it's all about me I'm the one yeah. flying this shit and those are the guys I think that just fucking irritate people. Yeah, it's like they wouldn't have a job without me. Yeah, exactly. I'm not down there fucking waving flags like a retard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at me. I got glow sticks. Look at me. <laughs> Fuck you, Tom. <laughs> he just, like, he just sees, like, <laughs> just like he's, every, like, mocking him. He's, like, yeah. and he's, like, doing a parody of him from the cockpit. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> he's, like, you know what? It's my last day. Fuck it. Like, just guides him right into another plane. <laughs> yeah. Just, or guides him right off the aircraft carrier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. He told me to do it. Boom. 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 I can only do what the glowy sticks tell me. <laughs> exactly. I've never made a decision before in my own life. <laughs> I'm lost with the, the glowy sticks. Yeah. But, um... No, it's like one one. I think that's what makes Hal Jordan the character that's got to learn all the life lessons where all it's already like, I've been living on the street, lost all my money already. Best thing ever happened to me. Just I'll, like the island, best thing ever happened. I'll say that Oliver Queen, though, doesn't he seem like one step away from, hey, man, we gotta go kill us some phonies. Yeah. Does he seem like one step away from that? Because he's like this white, 
blonde guy saying, I get the people, man. Come on. And just going in and just having this whole thing like, look at this fucking fat cat. Just stepping on. Like, there's even that issue. There's that cover. I mean, it comes back around. He's just like, we gotta kill the white man. He's like pointing an arrow, wearing like a war piece headdress, like a Native American. Like, right? Because like, well, he's got that like apartment where it's all like bohemian in there and everything like that. He's wearing like turtleneck sweatshirt. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like one of those things where it's just like, I'm wrong, I, I love Oliver Queen, but he just seems like one step away from like, you know, like one, like, like just no one give him a copy of Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> exactly. And this was one of the other days, like, dude, you started from this stuff. Remember when you were like a total douchebag, drunk teenager? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those days are behind me, man, though. Found an island, lost all my money. Fixes everything. <laughs> You, I think, hell, you need an island and you need to lose all your money. Here, give me your money. I, I don't want to give my money to you. No, give me your fucking money. He's like, no, 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 okay. Here you go, Oliver. He just starts burning. He's like, that's my savings. Like, You're not going to need it, bro. Not going to need it, dude. We don't need money. We don't need money. We got the city. He's like looking around. She was like, look at it. Look at that guy. Look at that hobo over there. He He's wishes taking... he had money. Let's go burn it in front of him. <laughs> He's taking Bro, he doesn't need them. the money either. Or <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can really use the money. He's like, you don't need it, man. We don't need money. You don't need money. <laughs> I invite you up to my uh, bohemian room, but, but uh, for dinner. But you know, I only got enough for me. I, I, I got a, you know, you need a shower policy. <laughs> That's about the only thing. You understand, right? Can't live in that much squander. <laughs> Maybe I can take a shower. No, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Have you ever, you ever had hobo scum clog your drinks before? Yeah, I haven't, but I can only assume. See, I can't afford a maid nowadays, so I can't be having that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that for shit myself. Yeah, like and Black Canary left, so I got nobody to clean up. <laughs> it's sixties. You think a man's gonna clean this up? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's traveling here. <laughs> like, let me look at this progressive comic. It sounds like it's so like non progressive. I think there's certain things that well, because I, I reread it a little bit ago. I think there's certain things in that book that it's trying like really hard just to nail down. I think people say I've heard some people say it sounds a little cheesy now. Because it does flat out spell it out for you, but you got to think of the time when it came out. Well, yeah, and I, I think you, you sometimes you need it. Like I think at that time period, like you almost it's like by spelling it out that was actually necessary because people did, had no idea because it wasn't like you could just go look this stuff up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you really had to go out of your way to find information back in the day. You yeah. were just force fed propaganda from like you know the thirty before that even on up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's like you needed that stuff to kind of come out and explain it to you. Yeah, and that, that's why that book's so important. Cause, plus, it also just, like... I am not. Sure, I don't think Green Arrow was a really big hero at the time. I think they are using Green Arrow... Because that, that's actually... Well, he didn't even have that many books beforehand, either. Because Green Arrow's always been that character. Until recently, he would just... He would have, like, a run, and then he'd have, like, a dry spell. And then he'd have a run, and then he'd have a dry spell. And I think that's how it's been ever since he first came out. I think that's how Aquaman's gonna be. Because I don't think yeah, Aquaman's... Yeah, Aquaman's always... been like that, too. And then now Green Arrow's got two books coming out a month. Like, nobody's business. And then he appears in other stuff, so... I mean, I guess for a long time, I was like, you just need a really good book series. I'm like, I guess all you really need is a movie. Or <laughs> yeah. a TV show. TV show's what really does it. But, well, because he's, yeah, Green Arrow always has some of the best books. And that's why he's one of my favorite DC things. Really, I'd almost say after Batman, it's like a Green Arrow book's probably like my highest rated is one. Is he still in Injustice 2? Yeah, he's in Injustice 2. Okay, yeah. I was wondering if he was one of the ones they took out. I was mad they took well, out Well, they killed him in like the other Injustice because when they went to the other dimension, it's like, oh yeah, that Green Arrow's already dead. Mm-hmm. So How'd he die? I don't know. He was beaten and raped by some hobo that said that he burnt money in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> Had it coming. Had it coming. Hal Jordan's like, I knew it. I fucking knew it. I knew we should not have done that. That hobo was Dr. Fate when he had the helmet off. Exactly. Before he became Dr. Fate, he was yeah. just living on the street in the 60s. No, there was a point I think he was a homeless guy who would just throw on a helmet. He's just like, I'm back, bitches! <laughs> and I remember was like, nobody cares! <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't know who's a ripoff of who, but one, either him or Dr. Strange is a ripoff of one of the other. I yeah, and who knows? If we, For all we know, they could have came out at the exact same time. Or well, there are those weird it. situations where it's like there is actually... It's a different series, but there's a British Dennis the Menace, and it came out the very same day American Dennis the Menace came out, and it is like just two guys who never met on opposite sides of the country, you know, so. Well, sometimes too, it's like, I think about that with movies, because you always see like when one movie comes out, like sometimes another one will come out right around it, it's like similar. Perfect example, like Mission to Mars, and um, Red um, Planet, and mm -hmm. uh, Ghost to Mars. But a lot of times, I think what happens is one movie gets greenlit, and then finally one of the other movies do is like, hey, we got any Mars movies? 
Well, Bob's had one for the last 10 years. Let's use it. Now any Penguin movies? We got some Penguin movies. Yeah, and I think that's just what happened. It's not that they're like, oh, they're ripping each other off. It's just literally like... We're going to jump on the Mars market. Yeah, we're going to... Hey, if that one movie's coming out, we got to be on there too. They didn't want a hole in the... In the what was it? They didn't want a hole in the... Uh, in the... What was it in the the death mission in the in, in Doctor Strange Love? We didn't want a hole in the end of the world like field or something like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We gotta fill that hole. We can't let Russia have the, like end the world with themselves. Yeah, exactly. We, we gotta figure this all out. Yeah. But um, also in that process of like, I guess from reading that Batman one, like I finally just started. Out, like there was a day where I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna take just one little kind of rest day. It was like. Just ease in. So I just, I read a bunch of books from my stack just to like knock them out. And I picked up one that I've had sitting there for like, probably since it came out for like the last year plus. Oh God, probably two years by now I've had it sitting there. And that's Southern Bastards. Did you ever read that one? I've heard good things about it. Dude, that book is amazing. It's literally, at the end of the day, it's kind of like the Walking Tall story, like the 70s version, the one we talked about in the podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, a couple of years, probably, probably the same time I picked it up. It's kind of like, I don't know if that's their total intention, but it has that same feel, except for it's more like almost picture if the dad was almost a walking tall guy, and then his son comes back 40 years later to mm -hmm. town, and the town's like all crapped up and everything like that, and it's all super rednecky. And Dude, the weird thing is, sir. it's one of these books I like in the beginning. Both the artist guy and the writer, they're like, they're like, I was born in the South, I love the South, but the South scares the fuck out of me. You know what I mean? It's, it's that place that's like, there's great things in the South, there's horrible things in the South. And they kind of go back and forth and they're just kind of doing it in like a very elegant paragraph. And when you read that book, it's like, this book really, even though it takes place in the South, like in Alabama, it's like, reminds me a lot of Twelby County. <laughs> Funny how that turns out. I feel like Twelby County is diet South. Because I've heard certain things, because I'll, I'll talk to, every so often I'll talk to somebody who was born in the South and they'll talk in this aspect of like, oh yeah, you know, I mean... I was kind of surprised by how redneck California can be if you go to some of the valley towns and whatnot. But as far as um, what it is there, it's just like you have. I've, I've seen a straight up lynching, and it was frightening. So yeah, it's, it's when you hear that kind of shit. Now maybe that's just like a, a rare thing that happens in the very, very far backwoods towns. But it's still scary. You know that could happen in this day and age. Plus, this book I think had a fucking amazing. Amazing first panel. Like, this blew me away. Look at this. Does this not just sell it for you? A dog taking a shit right by a bunch of Bible, a bunch of like Bible signs and whatnot. Free will church of God, Miles. <laughs> okay. I just, I'm like, dude, that, I'm like, dude, that's fucking genius. Put the dog shitting in the very beginning. The artwork in it's amazing, too. Well, no, he knows what you're in for right there. But that's that book. The, here's the other weird thing. I want to show you this real quickly as I'm flipping through. Is this set of modern day? <laughs> Yeah, it's set in modern day, and it's this guy who's about 60 years old, but when I was looking at the main character... The guy's in his 60s, the main character? He is. Well, that's cool. Usually it's always some guy, like, guy in his, like, late 20s or early 30s in these kind of stories. The one thing is when I was reading it, I was like, oh my god, his character looks very similar to Bitter Old Fuck. Let me find a picture where it really does look. There's one in here somewhere. You got any Bitter Old Fuck stuff coming out? Because I remember you... Yeah, I, I mean, look at that. Doesn't that look like... He's got the fucking same outfit on. He's got the mustache. My, I mean, my Bitter Old Fuck, he has more of an Errol Flynn mustache, where this one's got kind of like an old western thing. Mm -hmm. But they both got the red flannel. <laughs> and they're both old. Except for Bitter Old Fuck, I made him like 80 years does old. This take, does this take inspiration from Walking Tall? They say that in here? It doesn't say it anywhere in there, but it's a very similar story. And since Walking Tall is one of my favorite stories anyways... Like, I think that's probably why I liked it even more. I mean, it's, it's a mixture of, like, it's, because, like, also another thing, too, is this one guy in here, he's got, like, a Raiders shirt on, so that's what really reminds me of Tuolumne County, too. Oh, yeah. Except it says haters on it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it just has a lot of walking tall elements. I mean, his dad was a sheriff, and he'd carry around this wooden stick. And that's like what he used to like kind of fight crime with. Oh, that, that, that there's no way around that. Yeah, they, exactly. they totally pulled from uh, uh, Buford Pusser for that. But it's still its own thing, and yeah, just the artwork in it's awesome. Just the, the concepts of it's awesome. Don't flip too far to the end because there's a big twist there, so I don't want you to see that. And okay. Be, but um, I literally I, I was like I got to order the next two books, and I went out and I bought volume two and three. I didn't even realize there was that many volumes. I thought there was only two of them. Because a lot of image books only have about two books. Yeah. And then they're kind of done. That one's got four. You know, the fourth one's not out yet, but yeah, that one's still going. I won't f uh, flip any further, but I'm looking at this one right here. It's just a bunch of panels all lined up. It looks like they took some Frank Miller inspiration here. Yeah, so it's got a bunch of stuff. But yeah, Maybe don't, don't, don't go any further because you don't want to ruin yourself. But Is it more like, and then, yeah, there's they, like is he just stopping town corruption or is he stopping them from doing racist shit to people? Well, he or? goes back home and is like his uncle passed away or something like that. So he's cleaning up the old house that is 
because his uncle is just living in the house that he grew up in. Mm -hmm. And so he's getting all the stuff out, and he's talking to his wife on the phone, but you never see the wife. And he's like, yeah, I'm just going to be down here for three days. You know how much I hate it. Mm -hmm. And so on. And he's cleaning it up and getting ready to move things out. And in the process, he runs into some guy he knew from back in the day who's kind of like a tweaker or things like that. And he owes money to this kind of big boss, which is the guy who's the football coach. So mm -hmm. he's like the main guy at head of town. Of course, town. the football coach yep. who is the big, like, head cheese of the town. It's, this is all we fucking... That's kind of like, not all cases, but certain cases here, it's kind of like that. Not like that, not that the football coach is an asshole, but kind of like, we respect the football coach. That's our main entertainment for this town right here. Yeah, and that's how that is right there, too. The football is, like, the main thing, and it's just a small town in Alabama. But, um... So he goes back and he runs in this one guy that's like the diner. They're always going to have this barbecue pit that they go to. And he's like, oh, dude, I remember you. He's like, well, I can't remember what the guy's name is right now. But he's like, you know, he's like, it's you, dude. Where have you been for 40 years or whatever? You know, you were the star player of the football team back in the day. You, you, you just up and left one time. And this guy, you know, they're kind of talking. He's like, dude, you got to get the fuck out of here. Don't fucking stay around. Like, it almost looks kind of mean at first. But you kind of realize it's like, oh, no, he's mean. It's like, no, literally get out of here. Like, don't stay here. And in this process, he kind of ends up owing money to the football guy or to the coach. So his kind of like derelict lackeys come out and start and beat him up. And they literally like, they st what were they doing? They're like, they take him to the back of the kitchen. They start beating him up. So then I'm almost about to say bitter old fuck comes in. But <laughs> <laughs> the main character comes in and he grabs like the fry bin and just starts like wailing on him and everything's like that. And, you know, of course, the, po the cop's not doing anything about it. Nobody in town's really sticking up for anybody there. So he's just kind of... He doesn't want, but he realizes he's got to do the right thing. And him and his father never had a good relationship. He left to Vietnam to try to get as far away as possible back in the day. But he realizes over time, his like, father's grave's like sitting there, and he keeps talking to it and everything like that. And there's this humongous tree, and he's like, fuck that tree. you know, Because <laughs> the, the tree represents the stick that his father had and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So he tries it's to chop. Stick. He tries to chop down the tree at the very beginning. Of, when I was a boy. And he can't break the tree. The tree's too strong. Can't break the tree, or whatever you know. Metaphors. Yeah, metaphor. But finally, a lightning bolt hits it, and it bursts it. And in that, he pulls out pretty much a new limb, and he turns that into the stick that kind of uses the weapon. Well, the guy who wrote this, Jason Aaron, he wrote Thor. That sounds very Thorish, right there. Yeah, exactly. So it's very much like that. So, no, dude, that book, that book right there, fucking amazing. I, I'm so kind of bummed I let it sit there for, like, two years in a stack or whatever I had it for. That's what happened with me and Umbrella Academy. I remember Umbrella Academy. Yeah, it, was, it just kind of, you know, a lot of times it's the books that, like, you don't think much of it. Like, well, I got that book. It was a birthday gift from a girl I was dating at the time. And then about two months later, we broke up. And then I was just like, "Fuck that book." I was kind of, yeah, kind of like that. Like, I don't fucking need her. I don't need this fucking book. And I just and also it was a jarred way book. So there was that still that like little bit of time period. It's like, oh, it's emo. I got to be careful with it. Is it, it might convert me? Yeah, it was before I. Was you're before afraid I you'd start reading, and the next day you'd look in the mirror, and you're like, you no. just naturally have like dark circles around your eyes. I have like the reverse you're, mullet. The, the like, reverse like, mullet's like covering. No, no, I cut it. It just immediately it grows, grows back. back. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's like Evil Dead almost. I go, I go to like wipe it away. Then I look at my nails. I have like black nail <laughs> They're polish. all long. No. No. Ah, oh, my voice. <laughs> yeah, it starts getting high pitch. You're like, why is there all these these instruments here? And why are they all black? And where's, why do I have all these skinny ties that have stripes I just on go, them? I just go running out the door. Then I start having trouble running. I look, I'm wearing skinny jeans. I can't walk properly. And they got the straps on the back of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, you don't have that much movement. Yeah, so it's like, e -e 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 -e, as I'm trying to just move, like, no, no. <laughs> There's one seen me in real life, you know, I don't have the build for skinny jeans. So, um, but anyway, no. So that was one of those books where it's just like, I got, it was a, I would just, it was just, I, when I saw it, just remind me of that, that whole relate of her. So we're cool now. But at the time I was like, fuck that book, fuck her. And I just tossed it aside. And then it was just one of those books I tossed aside and then something else that went on top of it, something else went on top of it. <laughs> yeah. And I forgot the book was there. I totally forgot it was there. And then one day when I was moving shit around, it was actually like a little before I moved to San Francisco, when I was moving things around, I'm like, oh, this book. And then I just cracked it open and read it like, oh my God, I love amazing. this book. And uh, book volume two was even better. Mm -hmm. And just some of like the dark humor it has in it. Some of the weird humor. Like how like, um, I think is because I want to say they're, they all, they're all named numbers, but there is the one I think... Eleven. There's a little boy, who he went into. He went into like uh, alternate dimension. Went into the, into the future, 
and was an was an old man, lived up to be like eighty or ninety or something. And then he comes back in time, doesn't he? He comes back yeah. in time, but he has this little kid body he re- returned with, but he has this intellect of someone who with like ninety years of experience. He's like a train killer and he's a badass. And some of the things he do, like he's trying to figure out how to get back in time. And just some of the weird little comedy they'd have. Like he's sitting there and he's like has this equation. He's all like Whatever will I do? I, he, he, he's gone crazy. He's the only person left in the world. He's talking to like a mannequin. And he says like, What will I do? He sits there. Just like a panel of silence. He says like, Oh my god, you're right! It was a two! He like erases it. Puts it. <laughs> and that like sends him back in time. I want to say the mannequin, it's like written like it says it to him. Like, it's a two, you dolt. Of course, you're right! Like, he imagined the thing. Oh, yeah, I can't him. remember that because I haven't read that book since. Because whenever you discover it, you pass it to me right away. I was away. like, read this shit. And that's actually... I think and that what, was almost like our gateway into My Chemical Room. And then you kind of realize like, you know what? Why do we why do we put Bi Chemical Romance like on the side? They were actually a really good band and they write and Jared Way writes fucking good shit. Like he's, now I just follow him. Like when I see it, it's like, oh he wrote something, I wanna check that out. He's running a division of DC. He's running Young Animal, which I guess is sort of like not vertigo, but sort of like this weird kind of alternate kind of like it still takes place within the DC universe, but it's kinda of like alternate books, you yeah. know, like, uh, like obscure books. Like they have one set in Gotham called Mother Panic, which I want to check out. Yeah, I want to check that one out. I, I have the Doom Patrol, because that's the one he's actually writing. Mm-hmm. And that was one of those books where like, I read like the first two or three issues, and I, I, I'm so lost on it. I really have no... I cannot make heads or tails on what's going on in that book. Is it pulling back back history of Doom Patrol? I have no idea, because I never read the old Doom Patrol, so... Mm-hmm. I never read I, I am. It's one of those books... It was like, DC's attempt at making more of kind of like a... Uh, their X-Men, but then they... It went off and became kind of... It's more of its own thing. Yeah, it's one of those books... I am just so lost in. Like I like the I like the design and the looks of it, but I, I could not tell you what the fuck's going on in that book. That's what sometimes Grant Morrison books are. Like it's not that it's bad, it's just smarter than me. And I have to kind of go back and reread it, you know? I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, even the timing. Sometimes the timing, the, the cuts and the jokes, because you'd be reading something and you realize the cut goes back to like a flashback. Like there was a part where like it was Alfred in like Batman R. I. P. where he's talking about like Batman, like what his life like would have could have been. He's like, I'm glad it was a bat and not something else. And then like in the next yeah, panel, I'm glad somebody didn't come by and go fuck you, Bruce Wayne, and threw a dildo through my window. Or no, wasn't no, no, that's, that's it. It's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> just a dildo just slaps to the top of the statue of his father. Fuck you, head. Bruce. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I will. Def- I will fight crime the hard way. <laughs> just running around. He just picks it up. It's like doop, 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 just bouncing back <laughs> from. Alfred! <laughs> Make me a costume. So, could we just wait for some other message to come? Nope, that's it! Well, no, it's like when it was a joke, like, he's like, I'm very glad it was a bad and not something else. And you see, he's like, he's in this bright green, like, snake kind of like outfit with this weird zigzag design. <laughs> he says, like, Please, pu- please refill the, uh, ga- the, the gas tank to the Viper mobile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so. Okay, so there was like another book that I did the same thing where at first I. I read it and I was just really confused. Like the first issue, kind of like, I was like, I couldn't make heads or tails exactly what was going still on. Still, young animal or something? no? This wasn't a young animal one. That that the Doom Patrol one. Is, I I, I want to almost kind of go back and probably just reread them and then go forward. Maybe I'll kind of get it a little bit more. But no, this is another book that I had sitting here for a while. And then the second one came out and I bought it. Like I was just instantly bought. I'm like, because the artwork's cool enough. I think I'll like the story anyways if I just kind of sit down. So I just went like, let's just start from the beginning. We'll reread it and go from there. And that was Tokyo Ghost. And after I kind of got past like that first issue, because I will say the first issue, just written wise, it's a little rough because you just don't know what's going on. Like I thought, because there's this big guy on the cover, right? A motorcycle with like arrows sticking out of him. I thought that was the main character that was narrating the whole time. And then you realize it's like, oh no, it's the girl's the one who's the one narrating. He's just the The guy. The girl in the background. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, I was thinking that guy was narrating. So it was throwing me off and everything like that. But that story right there, Full on amazing. Once again, don't go too far towards the end because it has a cool, it has a real cool twist in it. Mm-hmm. But it's a story. It's like it's in two thousand like eighty three, and it starts off in Los Angeles, and everybody there is like super tech oriented. It, you know, it's that total post apocalyptic sci fi where it's almost went corrupted. It's got where people are just like kids are just sitting there just watching TV the whole time. It's like programs kind of like almost into like their brain, so they just got multiple screens just popping up. And everybody's just into these shows, 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 and on the internet. And even the part where it just shows, like, this, like, old lady, she's just, like, sitting on her couch, like, eating, like, cheesy poofs. And she's like, Mama's watching her show, and she's got this big, like, robotic dildo plugged into her. <laughs> <laughs> and then the girl's just like, Mommy, Mommy. She's like, Mommy's doing her pleasure time. Now you go outside. Oh, this is written by Rick Remender? Yeah. 
So oh, it's the sa- shit. I'm buying this thing, man. So it's the same it's- guy who did um, fucking... Uh, he did a fantastic run on Captain America. Yeah, he did he that, did, and he, then he did, um, he did that. There's another book, Seven to Eternity. He did that one. He wrote Dead Space. He wrote uh, Bullet Storm. So he's done all kinds of cool things. Yeah, Rick, uh, he did a, there's like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, he, he did something very interesting with Captain America. He, uh, he did the story where Captain America got sent to Dimension Z, which sounds so cheesy, it sounds so lame, but he basically, where Zola was running, had this whole corner he conquered and he had like just his like genetically engineered creatures were just destroying the uh the 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 land and then he gets there he finds this kid that's meant to be like his genetic clone and then he raises the kid and over the course of years steve rogers just has become like this warlord guy he looks he looks kind of like chad kroger kind of because he has like (laughs) he has like a he has like a he's starting to grow a beard he has long hair Uh you know so and Actually, I'll go with Kurt Cobain. Let's go with Kurt Cobain. But um, and but like you know, Warlord Kurt Cobain. And they yeah. just all like in like, it's just this fantastic book. And it's like it sounds like so. I mean, I'll be honest. The last two books, because that was two books like Cast Away and, and Dimension Z. And I know how cheesy it sounds, but it's actually a lot of heart because he has a lot of flashbacks back to like his mom in the forties and how his mother, how his father was kind of an alcoholic and would sometimes beat her, and how, how like things his mother taught him is what got him through this point in Dimension Z. Huh. And he's like stranded there for 10 years, but time moves fast there, but not in, uh, but, but it's been like maybe a day back in, uh, our world. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he comes back and they find out, oh, it turns out you can't age. And then the next two books that came out after that were good. They're, they were good. But same, same guy, same Rick, dude. Still Rick. It, okay. the, he's the guy that made Captain America get fucked up and get old. He didn't die though. He, but, uh, I don't know if he what he wrote after that. Uh, I gotta get caught up on that. But those first, the, 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 those Iron Nail and then Loose Nuke. Those both those books are good. But Castaway and Dimension Z was like fucking awesome. That got me back into reading Marvel. Huh. But yeah, so like, I'm sorry, I took over. Yeah, that book right there though. It's just like okay, it's 2083 or whatever. They're in there, and there's pretty much this girl who technically is the main character at first you don't really realize she is but she's the main character and then there's the big buff guy on the motorcycle on the cover and what it was is these two kids they grew up together they're like really like next door to each other and the girl is somebody who never accepted technology she never watched tv she always played outside she never did anything technological and the boy at first he's kind of like he's instantly into tv and everything like that and then she kind of breaks him away from that and said, no, no, we can go outside, we can play, we can feel real life, and all kinds of things like that. There's a lot of dick in it, I will yeah. say that. <laughs> and, well, that's what I like about the way that Rick, he writes, is he writes really, like, serious stories, but then he's got the twisted humor in there that he'll just put. Like, the guy who's running L.A., he's like the guy who creates, like, all the TV shows and all the internet programs and things like that. He literally just has his beard, and he's got, like, a pipe, he and like he walks around. He's got a look to him. Who? Looks like a southern plantation look to him. I guess he sort of looks like that. He almost looks like the Dos Equis guy. Kind of like that. And he, and he just walks around. All he's got on is an open shirt, but with no pants on and nothing else. So he's just like his dick's just he hanging out. He has a out. gun also. He always, always has like a revolver. Yeah, he's got like a revolver on and everything. And sometimes it's a squirt gun inside there. And he's like, oh, fucking girls. <laughs> but, um, and he's like doing things like that. And, um... You know, he's just walking. I just like, he does there's weird things too. Like he'll get it. He gets out of the pool or the hot tub or whatever. And he walks away and these, these two girls just put their heads in there and they just start slurping it up. He's like, yeah, they like my pee pee water. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also another part too. I just sent you a picture of it. Cause I just thought it was fucking hilarious. It's in the second book. Mm-hmm. There's like this Jimmy Olsen guy, like interviewing him. And then afterwards he looks at him, he's like, wow, it's so big. And there's just this fucking huge cock sitting there. And then he just starts fucking sucking at it and going to town. And he just sits there smoking his pipe like, yeah, whatever. Just another Tuesday. Well, They're proud I, of it. I remember you sent me that and I was like, I just, I was on my break at work. Well, that's what like, I'm like, I hope this like pop. I wish it was like one of those ones, you know, like on iPhones, like when you pop a message up, it appears on the screen. I wish the picture would pop up. So be like, it was just Done an again? attachment. It was just an attachment. Like, <laughs> you saw, you watching pictures of people getting sucked off again? <laughs> that was the, my friend Spencer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Always yeah. friend Spencer. Just sending the dick pics. <laughs> but, um. There, there's just all kinds of funny stuff like that. But that's what I like. It's a serious story, but then it's like, they still has like the twisted humor and I weird shit going on. I think you need that. Because, you know, the more story, the more comics and movies I've watched, like, we take ourselves super seriously. They're kind of boring when they're yeah, like that. Yeah, after a while, because that's why I don't think something like 
Underworld holds up because there's no real humor to it. Maybe a, maybe like one or two quick jokes, but not much. It needs a little bit more on that. Or Mad Max Fury Road. That's a very serious story, but that movie had no problem having a little bit Still of humor. Still making you laugh. Or making it like, it wasn't like jam packed with humor, but like making things so extreme, you can't help but laugh. Yeah. A motherfucker is like that whole, that whole build up with the. I'll, we'll make it back about this in a second. I just mean, I'm just making a comparison mm-hmm. here. That whole build up with the flame guitar. First starts off Army of Guys. You see a bunch of guys playing, do, 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 playing just drums. drums. Do, 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 it's just like do, 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 building up, building up, building up, building up. Guy playing guitar. But it's a guitar bass to top it off, too. So it's a double, like, neck thing. And then sets or up. No, a triple neck, then, I think. Yeah, and then, like, then shoots out fire. <laughs> so it's like this total buildup. I think, as cool as that is, there's no way that's not meant to be funny right there. Just this big, epic buildup. And uh-huh. I think some, some things that are really dark and really gritty... Not always, but a lot of times I just think they need a dash of humor, whether it be regular humor or like, or like you know, just fucked up humor. Yeah, and that, that's what I like about the Tokyo Ghost is that it's a very serious story, but like it also goes to the extremes. It's like it takes itself to that next level, which I like that kind of stuff in there. And as I said, it's like, yeah, that first issue I had to kind of warm up to it because it was just kind of confusing on what was going on. But, okay, as I say, go back to the story. It's like, okay, this girl, she's living with this, or she lives next to this boy. They kind of grow up together. As they become teenagers, they kind of fall in love. And at this point, um, in the street, there's these kids that are out, and this is how they get famous, is they make movies where they kind of, like, they have a script, but they shoot it live, in a sense. So they'll have, like, these guys that come out, and they're, like, actors. They got their lines all prepared, and they're like, there's one of the enemies! And they'll just beat somebody up in the street. Like, that's supposed to be, like, a villain or something like that. And they all come around and film it with their, like, phones. And then they post that up online, but when they post up, the boy gets the shit beat out of him, and then his girlfriend pretty much ends up saving him. And that gets posted on the internet, so everybody kind of calls him, like, you're a fucking pussy! Your girlfriend had to defend you and all this stuff! So he goes, fuck it. He joins this, like, tech thing that's kind of almost like the LAPD of the future. And they enhance him. They make him all super buff. Give him all types of powers and everything like that. And that big chopper to go right around. And he literally goes and, like, full-on murders all these kids. Like, just brutally attacks were all they, of them. Were they kids by this point? Or are they grown up? Uh, I think they were still kids by this point. I don't think it was too much. It might have only been a couple years so later. So he may have been, like, a kid, but he was just... It might have been, like, 20 years old, maybe, at this point. I don't know. So... Because, well, I feel like they're probably, like, in their 30s and stuff by the time you're, like, reading the main story. Because mm-hmm. the guy kind of has, like, a Wolverine look to him. But, um, so as they kind of go on, he becomes this, like, huge police. And he's, like, the terror of L.A. He's the guy who's just hunting down all kinds of crime. Kind of like Judge Dredd? It, almost kind of like that. And she's kind of with him the whole way. And they kind of keep her around because, like, oh, that's okay. That's what keeps him, like, calm and in control is he has this girlfriend. And, you know, they work for the guy with, you know who's running L.A. off all the TV shows, who just has his dick hanging out the whole time. He can never remember the girl's name. He always calls her something different. <laughs> you know, he just doesn't really care. And then they get this thing, they're like, dude, we gotta escape to Tokyo. We got, we'll tell them we're on a mission to infiltrate Tokyo and to take their resources. Because Tokyo's this place where they've released this EMP field, so no technology works whatsoever. And so they sail off to this area, which is kind of interesting, too, as it's like, you know, Tokyo, you always think of being super, like, neo Instead, it's not Neo Tokyo anymore. It's now it's like feudal Japan Tokyo. Mm-hmm. So they sail out there and it's just green. And it's like you see the buildings and everything, but it's all grown over. kind of looks like Planet of the Apes style. And they go there and everybody's like living like feudal Japan. And they accept them into it and everything like that. They go, it's okay. You know, we take in all kinds of like, you know, people from the outside. We will, you know, we'll show you the way to live, you know, to be peaceful, to be samurai and all this stuff. And in the process the guy's able to get rid of his technology because he needs it. He needs it like venom, in a sense. So he starts injecting himself all the time to keep it going. But he's finally able to get off of the technology and get rid of all that stuff and become more human once again. And they start living this very peaceful life. But you know that's not going to change because one of the kids that he, like, massacred that, like, originally filmed him... In Japan? He was in Japan. So he's got it like that part. And that becomes kind of a feud. And then from there, things go on. I don't want to say any more, but... It is a fucking amazing book. And then the second one picks up kind of like, you know, in, in a cool way that you don't even expect. Well, last time I was here, I remember I flipped <clears> through it. Like, oh, this is really cool artwork. Really like the character designs and all that kind of stuff. Really cool looking setting. This, you know, like dirty, gritty, cyberpunk kind of look with a little bit of medieval, like feudal Japan look to it as well. And then, like, I'm like, then you, then I, then as you were explaining to me, and then I saw Rick Remender's name. I was like, oh, shit. There's no way I'm not buying this book within the next couple of weeks or lux week i'll just say yeah it's it's totally worth picking that and that southern bastard so good if you want to see another really good book that remender is writing it's called low oh yeah and that's just kind of like um 
really fucked up book basically about um few uh, the if you were so far ahead in time like well i'm sorry um we're so like so far in the future the surface world is unlivable so people live underwater uh -huh. and society is kind of crumbling apart and this has a little bit of that kind of dark humor as well i mean it's very dark it's very bleak probably more so than just flipping through this probably more so than uh um well, that one's Ghost. pretty darn dark though it's, it's pretty dark but i mean i could see the sense of humor as far as the guy walking around just like we're just wearing nothing but a bathrobe and like having like a squirt gun on him you know yeah he's just so chill and content with everything where low, it's about basically. So the world is basically on the verge of ending, and nobody can go there. They, there's this lady. She wants to find um, another world for Earth to live on. So they have pods out there that are trying to looking for a new world because Earth only has like years left. Uh -huh. So, so and she's kind of just sure. Uh, her and her family are basically just working their way through, um, just like what's essentially almost kind of like Mad Max underwater trying to find this probe and find the means to get on a spaceship and go explore this other world. Huh. And it's, it's a lot of people die. I don't want to say who and how, but a lot of people die. It's very tragic, really sad, but there is a little bit of that sense of dark humor here and there, mm -hmm. but you know, and each little like colony has its own, like each colony has its own like sense of politics and own kind of identity so that's kind of interesting as well oh, that's pretty cool yeah i'll check that one out too at some point but yeah i was just glad to finally start like working my way through my stack of stuff mm -hmm. which in the process like, it made me buy more things so i was like i need those southern bastards volume two and three mm -hmm. and then i bought those off amazon and then amazon sent me a thing for each book i bought they're like here's a promotional thing you get a free digital graphic novel which is funny because I paid like maybe like fifteen bucks for like the two Southern Bastards combined, mm -hmm. and the, the two digital ones it was like twenty dollars worth of comics. Oh, I'm like oh sweet! So I got Old Man Logan and Maximum Carnage. It's like hell yeah, there we go. Yeah, I've been reading the Old Man Logan continuation, so and that's good. I mean, it ain't, it ain't the Millar one, but yeah. the current one, the ongoing one, still a fun. It's still fun and interesting, you know. It's just hard to top. But it's like it's almost as if you took Dark Knight Returns. And I would totally read it if they did this. But they took Dark Knight Returns. We're doing the ongoing Dark Knight Returns series and not like a event thing. Like a yeah. Strikes Again. Like here is a self-contained story. More of like, oh, it's a continual monthly story. Yeah. I would read the fuck out of that. But it would just, it wouldn't feel the same though. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what would be kind of a cool one almost? And if you did it, that would be do a prequel to Dark Knight Returns. They tried it with Batman and Robin All-Star. Yeah, but we'll see. That one is really good. I like that one a lot still. I know a lot of people don't like that one. I still like it. I like I would, it. But, they, but it, didn't, it didn't continue on, though. And I felt like it was supposed to only be like a 12 issue run and they stopped at 10 or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's how it felt to me. It didn't feel like it was supposed to be ongoing. It just felt like it was supposed to be one book. No different than Dark Knight Returns. No different than, um, you know, Batman, uh, the Dark Knight, um, fucking. Dark Knight. The uh, three. That so, one. Oh, Because uh, that Race. one just finished off. Master yeah. Race, yeah. Um, this, well, I'll say that one, uh, I think the thing with All-Star is, the idea is it's a prequel, and, I mean, I can live, I can live with a darker, grittier, angrier Batman that does, who's not essentially really a good guy, because it's a pocket universe, it's a different yeah. universe, but at the same time, I like the idea of, how do I put it? Okay, I kind of like it more in the context of, like, okay, here is the Dark Knight Returns universe, it's not so much that he, he took a different path to get there. It's more of a, here's an alternate universe. What if Batman went this direction? Yeah. Rather than being kind of like, oh, it has its own history. I like to believe that but what Batman's history was Batman's history. This is, then this is where it diverges off into a pocket universe kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Where all-star Batman and Robin Boy Wonder it's like, oh no, he was always a crazy, psychotic asshole. He was yeah. actually more so when he was <laughs> yeah, younger. He, he's better when he gets older. He's I nicer. Mean, yeah, like he, the idea, like he's literally just like, boy, you're gonna do what I said. Fuck the, the fuck I'm getting. Wear this you, fucking costume. I'm gonna do. You just got drafted into a war. You know, <laughs> it's like, oh my god, no wonder, fucking like Dick Grayson went evil and strikes again. Yeah, it's like fuck this shit. And I guess in some way, because even in Strikes Again, he's like. He doesn't even have any love for him. He's like, fuck that kid. I don't give a shit. Yeah. And it's just so there's... When he kind of makes up and he's and like he cries and he's holding the kid, he's just like, there was no time to mourn. Like, yeah, that means nothing. Because what's going to happen in like 40 years from now? Yeah, exactly. There's all those kind of things like that. But I feel like you could almost do something like... Even if it's not like backed up with that one, like it could be even farther. Maybe like when he's Batman's like in his like 50s. Like, yeah. 
or be- before he retires, I guess, because what has he been retired for? Is it 10 years? Is that how long he's been retired in Dark Knight Returns? I want to say it's like 10 years or something. Something or like that. So maybe it's like, go back 10, go back like 15 years and kind of have it go from there. Let me be wrong, and I still like, I still like All-Star, Batman and Robin. It's just, it's a take. It's a really weird take. Yeah. And I like it being separate from Dark Knight Returns, because like I said, I like it, I like the idea of, this is Batman's history, and this is where it segments off, comes his own thing. I don't like the idea of, like, he already had this own built-in history, and he was always this weird, crazy asshole. Yeah. I, I just think it's a fun book. I think that's what, why I like it a it's lot. It's fun. Like, no, I it's, think it's really fun. It's like, I think that sometimes people, they don't like it because they take it almost too serious. Everybody's, oh, I like it, I like it. But it's like, it's just, everyone's so fucking angry. Everyone's just so fucking pissed off at each other. One woman's come strutting into town, just like, motherfucking out of the way, sperm bank literally yeah. a line from the book yeah and then she's like can't stand being around all these fucking men fucking men. fucking hate them and i think that's what makes it's like she's just she, just she has to she has to have a tumblr blog by this point and then like or no, yeah tumblr and then like they go down there and she's like i don't just, we should just go out and kill this fucking bad he's gonna fuck it up for all of us <laughs> Diana, just chill. No, fuck you, Clark. It's like, Diana, I will fucking kill you if you do anything against what I say. You know, like, he's, his eyes turn red. He doesn't say that exactly, but something close to that. Yeah. And it's like, that's fucking Superman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? So it's like, so it's one of those things where, um, I mean, I like it. Don't be wrong. I'm glad it exists. It just, in my own head continuity, it's separate from Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. You, I mean, you can do it like that. I just kind of pair them up together. I feel like... It's know, what Frank wants, and I get that. And I'm yeah. not going against, like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, Frank, but it's just, it's one of those things, like, oh, I don't know. The it's way I kind of look at it, it's like you got um, Batman Year One, then you got Batman All-Star, then you got Dark Knight, and, well, technically, I guess you got the prequel one now, then you got Dark Knight, then you got Dark Knight Strikes Again, and Dark Knight 3. That's how I just kind of look at it. That's like the that's the Frank Miller run. Yeah, yeah. no, I get that. It makes sense. Or if you want to add the Spawn one in there somewhere, too. Did Frank Miller do that Didn't the Frank Miller Spawn cross... This is the Batman Spawn crossover take place in the Dark Knight Returns universe? I thought you told me that. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is Frank Miller that did that I thought you told me that. Maybe not, but yeah. I can't remember. I have that book sitting there, but... Yeah, maybe that is. Yeah, I think it is Frank Miller. Because I remember there was, a, there was a double reason why I bought it. Was it just because it was Batman and Judge Dredd? It was like Batman, Judge Dredd, and Frank it? Miller? Oh, I thought, was it Spawn or Frank or Judge oh, was Dredd? It? Oh, maybe it was Spawn. I thought the Spawn one took place in the same universe. Oh, yeah, the Spawn. Maybe it was, oh, yeah, I forgot I had that book, too. I had that crossover. Yeah, that must have been Frank Miller. Because mm-hmm. I don't think, I, don't, I think it was Frank Miller and Todd McFarlane. It was like a double whammy. Oh, that's a double whammy. I, I think time. it was. So I'm like, that's pretty that's cool. That's like a super group right there. I think. I could be wrong. Todd McFarlane might not be on it, but I'm not too sure. But. Well, um, regarding, uh, reg- well, I guess the thing is, I like the idea of in Dark Knight Returns and Strikes Again, all these heroes we know build up to becoming bitter and jaded. Mm-hmm. And you could see, like, even in Strikes Again, Barry Allen's still trying to hold on to a little bit of, like, hope. Yeah, he's, in a like, little he's bit. like, I got shorts. That's I what got- tells me that <laughs> yeah. I still have a dream. <laughs> yeah, like... Batman gave me, like, I asked if Batman can make me a pair that didn't have these ridiculously short shorts. He says, nope, nope, you're the running boy. You need to show off them legs, yeah. show off them calf muscles. That's what they like, right? <laughs> Start to feel it. be like, yeah, that's what the kids like these days. <laughs> just, I just imagine this creepy just licking his calf, like, yeah. Ooh, t- <laughs> taste the sweat. Robin, get over here and taste the sweat. you are like, Carrie, get over here and taste the sweat, goddammit. <laughs> that's, that's a man's sweat. That's, he just, like, slaps the calf. Yeah. Now slap it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Bruce, I'd really like to just get out of here. <laughs> She's like, yeah, well, you were fast enough to run away, but you didn't. You did. You stayed. You took it like took it like a bitch. <laughs> I don't mean any harm by that, Carrie. That's just a term to you know, us men use. <laughs> <laughs> He's, like, He's got, like, Not talk. towards you, but just towards yeah. like... Every other woman. You get what I mean, right? Right, yeah. I'm just calling him a female Doug. It's, it's okay. It's just a man <laughs> thing. Like he's like talking down to her. <laughs> she doesn't understand. Maybe you don't get it. I get understand. Like, I get it. You know, you were only into gymnastics for so many years and it's kind of like taint your brain. Probably something you don't understand. <laughs> like, oh boy, here we go again with Frank in this. <laughs> he's like backpedaling and forward pedaling all at the same time. I don't know how that's supposed to happen. but Though that ge- the gears are just jammed up. <laughs> Just like the chain's breaking all in the process and going nowhere. Chain just snaps, derailer just starts like flicked right off the bike. Batman starts making the noose. It's just nothing's (laughs) going good here. 
No, but. well, I guess it's because it's one of those things you could see like a lot of the characters, like you know, Martian Manhunter, who was like the like the noble, like well spoken, was like. A bartender, like, fuck, man, what, I, I saw my life, I'm gonna know how I'm gonna fucking die, and then you see, like, you, like, you know, flat, like, Barry was, like, the one guy who's, like, I still got hope, I mean, I'm a little unsure about it, but I still got hope, Clark is just, like, I hate my fucking job, but I guess I gotta do it, Wonder Woman's still, like, I hate fucking men, and then, like, the Adam, I wanna say the Adam, I, I don't remember what his personality was. I remember I was... Conf- what I, it was one of those things, like, when I first flipped through the book, it's like, sick. what the fuck is going on? Who's wrestling uh, Octopus naked? What the fuck? And you, then it zooms out. Oh, the Adam was so small, he was fighting, like, some kind of, like... He was stu- stuck in a Petri dish fighting a parasite for, like, years. Yeah. And then he comes up, and he's just like, oh, I'm, I'm free again, like Bruce Freedom, so... Well, that's kind of like, I was. I started reading that Electro book that I have sitting over there. It's written by Frank Miller and drawn by, I guess I can't remember the guy's name, but it's got like really cool artwork in it. Where it's like, mm-hmm. it's extremely like, it's almost like, I, I'm going to say this, even though it came out in the 80s, it has like that 60s style of like experimental art, like mm-hmm. late 60s thing. But that book is almost like, it's hard to comprehend because it's just like, endless narration like way like he likes his narration and sometimes like narration is one of those ones you can only have so much narration in a comic book comic books are not meant to have like ridiculous amounts of narration i think that was one of the downfalls of um not dark knight returns or strikes again but uh all-star batman and robin because i'll say dark knight returns well, he had like the repeated narration in yeah it. he strikes again strikes again had like this um like I'm, a, you actually need the narration because the artwork is so batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah. No pun intended. Uh, it's so fucking crazy. You actually need the narration. Like, oh, that's what's going on. Where, like, because before, like, what the fuck is? Oh, that's all debris. Oh, 9/11. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, and then you get to Dark Knight. Uh, uh, I mean, Batman and Robin, uh, All Star. That's where it's like. You got Jim Lee as an artist, so it's it picture it clear. clear. You know what the fuck is going on. It's just, he's just like, I got a date with Bruce Wayne. I got a date with Bruce Wayne. How cool is that? How cool is that? How cool is that? Cool as that is how. How is cool is what? Four pages <laughs> you know, like, later, I got a date with Bruce Wayne. I got a date with Bruce Wayne. How cool it's is that? like, is it? oh, you know. Are you doing like, are you making. So a- whenever I read those parts, I just look at it once and I just skip ahead. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you know, like. They catch me, I fly. They catch me, I fly. All right, Dick, we get it. You're you're a trapeze artist. Yeah, it's like my the, parents. They love me. They catch me, I fly. So, sometimes it's like yeah, it's, it's like, like it's not the, a the fucking ele- poem. The electric, the electro one is like the worst of I've, I've seen of Frank Miller and his like narrations. It's just, it's almost like too much to comprehend, and it's like, I, I don't know what it is. It's just like okay, pull back a bit. Pull, take about half of these captions and just toss them out. You don't need them. Like it, it just it reminds me of like what happens. Like when you let two guys sit in a room with no editor whatsoever and almost like too much freedom. Well, I haven't read that one, but it's like when it's, he, it's when still he, cool, but it's more to me. It feels more like it's he's an art trying book. to. It's hard an art book at the end. Of the you should flip through it and just look at it. Mm-hmm. And it's not saying it's because it explains all of Electra's backstory because they didn't have that yet in Daredevil, so it's like that's where it's all introduced at. But it's it's just hard to take in. I feel cool looking book, just almost like I got about three issues into it and I was like, yeah, I might finish this. <laughs> I just crossed my mind. I just realized, I mean, I know who'd win, but I just realized, oh, Greek versus Greek. Wonder Woman versus Elektra. I wonder how long that's going to happen. I mean, I'm sure you can find some fan art somewhere. Yeah, exactly. But, um... Sadly enough, that's one of those ones. That's kind of like a... It's like those poor Nazis in the movie. There's not really any competition. I bet they'll probably come up with some bullshit reason. I mean, yeah, they, they, they would come up with some way to do it, but it's a lot They always give up... A, they always mean to me wrong. I know Batman... I mean, Batman wins, and I want Batman to win, but... It's always a, a, a reason. He just Batman's smart, 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 smart. <laughs> He's having to have kryptonite on him at the time. Or yeah. Like, um, uh, what was I gonna say uh, regarding? Oh yeah. Um. Well, I, I, every so often though, like his narration's good because it'll be one of those things like in Born Again, he'll give you like additional information that you would not know otherwise. That actually kind of helps the scene. Mm-hmm. Kind of like so and so has been working at the hospital for this many years, and so and so actually just one of those things like that's why he's willing to take. Uh, that's why he's willing to look the other way when a shady character on a trench coat walks in, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's one of the so we didn't see all that stuff, but it's enough to know how this guy get in here and kill this person or whatever. You exactly. Know? And I, the thing with this, I like narration a lot. I'm one of those kind of people because there's always that saying that people use are like, "Show it, don't tell it," and I always think that's like one of the gayest fucking like things from like any it's type of art school. Yeah. Because I'm one of those people like, 
I don't think that's always necessary. I actually like sometimes, like, I think it's because it comes from noir. Like, do you like noir narration or do you don't like noir narration? A show it, don't tell it is somebody who hates noirs. Somebody who likes to talk more is somebody who likes narrations. And it's like one of those ones, kind of perfect, it's like a Kevin Smith movie. I think that's one of those ones, you know, that person who says show it, don't tell it would say, that movie's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? So I think, and I'm not saying it's like, you just like, oh, it's got to just have, you know, captions that explain everything, but it's that sort of thing that, Sometimes I think it's fine to have it in writing. Why? You know what I mean? Because I'm one of those people, I like the Blade Runner cut where there's the narration in it. Yeah. To I'm, me, it feels more like I'm watching a noir. I'm multi- oh, well, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, I like both versions, but I like that. I actually like that version more. I uh, I kind of agree with you for the most part. I feel like most of the time, narration's fine. I just think sometimes they when narration's not, when it's not needed. Like, I think there's some, like, all right, here's, here's uh, not... Right, Blade, there's Blade Runner, which is a masterpiece, and mm-hmm. then you got this, which is a good movie, but it's not. It might be an unfair comparison. Uh, Zombieland. Not all the narration in that movie's bad, but there's some moments where it's like you're literally, you don't need to tell me that. I can see that. Like that's where I realized the guy in that crocodile skin jacket, and those two girls in, they were my friends. They were my family. Like that. Like that seems. Yeah. Like, sometimes there's, you don't need it. Yeah. Or it's just kind of like something about just having a Twinkie. That's when I real. It's just what drove him. Or there's, there's, I mean, I'm realized because that's one of those movies. Like when I first saw it, I loved that movie. Now I still like it. It's still uh, a good movie. But it's like, it's it, like kind of like you said. You'll it'll be one of those things you rewatch it. it. Like it just, not that it doesn't hold up. It's just was amazing when you first. Yeah, saw it. it. it's like it blew you away for like the because I watched it movie like I saw it like twice in theaters. I watched it a couple times when it, I haven't seen it. I really those movies like I watched it a bunch when I was in theaters. I watched it a bunch when it came out on DVD, and then that was like it. I don't think I've gone back to it in like years. I remember like. Uh, because you were living in Modesto at the time, and I was visiting you. I'm like, what do you want to do? I can't do a whole lot because I don't got a lot of money. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, Zombie Land came out. Oh, fuck. We got to go see Zombie Land. You haven't seen that shit? Yeah. I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, let's go see it. I thought you said you're low on money. I'll go bankrupt for Zombie Land, bro. <laughs> it was like, it's that good. No, yeah, and that's totally the case there. But, um. But I think uh, regarding the narration thing, though, I think that, um. Like, here's an example where I think some of the narration could have been a little, like, toned down. Like, in Kevin, in like, well, to me, Kevin Smith movies are fine because it's just, it's a talking movie. It's yeah. just say like Tarantino movies are talking movies. Mm-hmm. Um, with some Kevin Smith movies, the only one that I think the narration or the, the conversations about what happened really dragged was Dogma because Dogma is almost kind of like there's so much exposition and so much talking about all this grand, like, uh. Angels versus devils. This, that. This is how this war. This is how this world with like all this Christian mythology works and all that. Like that is very interesting. Yeah, we're only talking about it. Yeah, I will say because that's that is kind of the downfall of dogma. Is it would it needs somebody to kind of like show that. That's why like dogma, it almost needs like a full on like comic version where like you have almost the movie, but then you can play out all those scenes and see what they actually look like. Yeah, because there's a part where they're talking about, like, a battlefield of angels versus devil, or angels versus angels, uh-huh. and this and that, and they're always digging deep into, like, well, I was a muse, and then I came to Earth, and this and that, and I don't need some, like, fast cut, like, boom, 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 cut, showing it all, but, like, just something else going on, rather than just holding on these characters hanging out in a bar, just saying this. I'm like, that would have been a little bit more interesting to see mm. than just kind of sit there and listen to it. I still like that movie a lot. But, yeah. You know. No, I agree. That I think that is kind of like a downfall there. And that's that's one of those ones I know that's kind of due to probably like budget and everything like that. Uh-huh. You know, there's other factors going against something there. But yeah, it's like, I don't know, there's a time and a place for narration. That's definitely true. But I'm not, I'm definitely not opposed to it. In fact, I actually kind of appreciate it more. Just don't go, oh, don't go over the top where there's almost like more narration than there is drawings. Uh, my thing is just, Give narration to, like, information you wouldn't have otherwise. I think yeah. that's the thing. I think if you can give me, like, I, I don't know what's going on in the character's head, so that's why narration might work right here. Or I just don't need, don't, like, don't, don't, don't spoon feed it to me. Don't spell it out for me entirely unless there's something, like, something that's clearly not on the picture on the, on the the picture that I can't see. Yeah, exactly. But, well, that's probably a good place to wrap it all up with, or else we'll go on for tangents upon tangents and everything like that. But uh, I'll put some of those books up in the links there. So if you want to support the podcast and check out some sweet books, uh, just use the Amazon link in the description. That will help support the show. won't cost you any extra, and it'll lead you right to Amazon. They'll probably sell them to you for like six bucks a piece anyway. So can't beat that. And then you'll also hopefully get those free books, too, that I got when I ordered like comics just recently. So that's cool. 
Um, you can also buy Pizza Boys 1 and 2 on Amazon. Get those for Kindle. And then it's also on Comixology as well. The first issue, not the second one yet. But till then, check out OldManOrange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, and more. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at OldManOrange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at OldManOrangePodcast at Yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. And if you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. Won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks for listening, and tune in next week to Old Man Orange.